If you work with 32-bit 3D renders in Affinity Photo, you may notice that when you bring them into Affinity Photo, they look too bright and washed out compared to the initial result you may have seen in whichever software you're using, whether that's 3ds Max, Blender, or a game engine, for example. Now, I'll explain a little bit about why this occurs and also give you a quick fix using the procedural texture filter, which you can apply non-destructively. Let's look at my first example here. This is a 3D render produced using 3ds Max and V-Ray. Now this is the TIFF version of the render, and as we can see up here, it's in 16-bit precision, and it has a non-linear color profile. Now compare when I move across to this document tab here. This is the 32-bit OpenEXR version of the same render, and it looks too bright and washed out. Now the reason this occurs is because 32-bit OpenEXR files have a linear color space. So the color values contained within this document here are linear as opposed to non-linear. Now when this TIFF file was written out of 3ds Max and V-Ray, its linear color values were correctly translated for the non-linear color space. So what's going on here then? Well, the values in this document are essentially linear, but a non-destructive view transform is being applied on top of these linear values. To demonstrate this, I can go to View, Studio, and enable the 32-bit preview panel here. So on this panel, we have a display transform option down here. Now this is currently set to ICC display transform, and essentially what this will do is color manage between the color profile of the document and your display profile. So we're actually getting a non-linear view transform. If we were to switch to unmanaged, we're not doing color management from the document color profile to the display profile, and we're essentially seeing the linear values here. However, if we want to export this document, to an 8-bit or a 16-bit nonlinear format, like TIFF or JPEG, for example, this option here is not going to help us because it's entirely non-destructive. This is simply applied as a view transform, and it doesn't change the color values in the document. So essentially, if we want to see what result we're going to get when we finally export to that 8-bit or 16-bit nonlinear color format, we have to stick to ICC Display Transform. So this then leaves us with the issue of how to get our document here to look like this. And the answer is very simple. We need a basic gamma transform. We can achieve this non-destructively by using Affinity Photo's Procedural Texture Filter. So before I apply the filter, I'll move across to the Layers panel. And I've got my RGB layer here and my Alpha channel. Neither of them are currently selected, which is fine because it means when we add the procedural texture filter, it will apply above both of these layers, which is what we want. So I can go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Colors, and Procedural Texture. Let me just drag this dialog over here so we can see it better, and I'll expand it slightly as well. So now all we need to do is click the plus icon three times to add three equation fields for the red, green, and blue channels. And in each of these channels, we're going to raise the color channel to a power of 2.2. So in red, I want to type capital R to the power of 2.2. And to get this symbol here, all you do is hold shift and type six on your keyboard. Bear in mind that applies for a traditional QWERTY keyboard layout, both UK and US. We'll do the same for green, so I'll click in here, type capital G to the power of 2.2, and then do the same for the blue channel, so capital B to the power of 2.2, and hit return on the keyboard. And as we can see, we've now achieved the same look that we had with the nonlinear TIFF file. We can save this as a preset so that we can reuse it with other documents. So to do this, we can click into the icon here, and let's go to Manage Presets, which will enable us to create our own category. 
Let's create a category here and call it 32-bit. And then we can close this down. And now we can go to create a preset. Under the category, we'll choose our newly created 32-bit category here. And then for the preset name, we'll just call this linear transform correction and choose create. OK, let's close this dialog down. And I'll just show you another example quickly. So this is from a game engine, which gives you the option of rendering out a high resolution screenshot, both in a non-linear format like this TIFF here and in 32-bit linear, which is this version. And as before, we're going to apply the same technique, which is to use the procedural texture filter. Now let's just say, for example, that we had a layer selected on the layers panel. If I now go to layer, new life filter layer, colors and procedural texture. Notice that because I had that layer selected, the procedural texture will mask or nest into that layer. Now for this particular example, this is fine since we don't need it to affect the alpha channel. But if you are doing some compositing and you have multiple layers, you might just want to drag this procedural texture out to the top of the layer stack here, then release the mouse button. And finally, on the procedural texture dialog, we can choose that preset that we created previously. And then we can close the dialog down here. And if we quickly switch over to the nonlinear TIFF version, we can see they're now identical. So essentially, if you want to do some compositing or retouching work to your 32-bit renders, you can ensure parity with how your renders looked originally in your authoring software by using a simple gamma transform with a procedural texture filter. And of course, because we added it as a live filter layer, it's non-destructive, which means you can hide the effect and then show it again. And that's really useful because you don't have to destructively change the original layer information here. Just a quick note then about why 32-bit behaves this way in Affinity Photo. So imagine you are a photographer and you have a workflow where you take several bracketed exposures of a scene in order to merge them into an HDR document in post-processing. Now, when you merge them to an HDR document, you are editing in 32-bit and you are compositing in a linear color space, but you don't actually want to be seeing the linear color values or unmanaged. You want to see non-linear transformed color values so that it will match the results you get when you export to a non-linear color profile format like 8-bit JPEG or even 16-bit TIFF. Now, of course, this has an adverse effect for 3D renders because typically the software you're using, like 3ds Max, for example, will not have a color managed view. Instead, you'll be seeing the linear unmanaged color values. So, of course, this is just a very quick workaround to match those unmanaged linear values that you're seeing in your editing software when you bring those 32-bit linear document formats into Affinity Photo.